namaste welcome to guru krupa video number 5 today is guru varam thursday may 26 2016 we continue with what mahaparivar said in the last video number 4 he started explaining what is dharma and today we continue his lecture when he explains in very simple terms on what is dharma and how it should be followed so quoting him i start the great importance attached to bhakti or devotion in all religions is founded on the belief of god the need for divine support for virtuous conduct ordinarily it is not possible or easy to develop faith in or devotion to god expressed in abstract terms for the common people devotion must take the form of practical steps that is how rituals originated sandhya vandana the namaz and other forms of prayer or examples of such rituals the religious teach people their duties how they must conduct themselves to god in the very midst of their worldly life love everyone live a life of sacrifice serve mankind such are the teachings of various religions if a man lives according to these tenets it is believed that his soul will reach god after it departs from his body those who ascribe to advaita or non dualism declare that the soul will become one with the godhead according to another system of belief after reaching the lord the soul will serve him and ever remain happy as the recipient of his compassion there is no need to quarrel over the nature of the final state by following one path or another we attain the lord and that will be the end of all our sorrows all our frustrations and all our failures in this world there will now be nothing but bliss full and everlasting no more than this we need to know for the present if the paramatman is to draw us unto himself we must without fail perform our duties to him as well as to the world it is these duties that constitute what is called dharma again it is dharma that serves us when we dwell in our body and when we cease to dwell in it it serves us in life and after life when we are in this world we must do that which would take us to a desirable state after we depart from it we take an insurance policy so that our relatives will be able to take care of themselves when we are gone but is it not far more important to ensure that we will be happy in our after life dharma is our after life insurance but in this life too it is dharma that gives us peace and happiness there is no need to be doubtful or confused about the dharma we ought to follow 
We are all steeped in the dharma that our great men have pursued from generation to generation. They have inwardly realized eternal beatitude. And we know for certain that they live without any care, unlike people in our own generation who are always discontented and are embroiled in agitations and demonstrations of all kinds. All we need to do is to follow the dharma that they practiced. If we try to create a new dharma for ourselves, it might mean trouble. And all the time, we would be torn by doubts as to whether it would bring us good or whether it would give rise to evil. It is best for us to follow the dharma practiced by the great men of the past the dharma of our forefathers. Man is subject to all kinds of hardships and misfortunes. To remind ourselves of this, we eat the bitter flowers of the neem tree on New Year's Day, that is on the very first day of the Tamil year, we accept the bitterness of life. During the Pongal ceremony, which is celebrated almost towards the close of the year, we have sugar cane to chew. If we have only sweetness in the beginning, we may have to experience bitterness towards the end. We must not have any aversion for the bitter, but welcome it as a medicine administered by Mother Nature or by Dharma. If we do so in due course, we will learn to regard any experience, even if it were unpleasant, as a sweet one. Great indeed were the misfortunes suffered by Lord Sri Rama during his exile in the forest. To a son going on a long journey, the mother gives food to take with him. Kausalya does the same when her son Rama leaves for the forest, but she does so after much thought. For she wants the food to last during all the 14 years of his exile. And what is that food? Kausalya gives Rama the eternal sustenance of Dharma. Ragava she says to him, it is dharma alone that will protect you. And this dharma is what you yourself protect with courage and steadfastness. It is the escort of dharma that the mother provides her son, sent out from his kingdom. Yam palayasi dharmam pam dhritya cha niyamena cha. Savai Ragava Shardula Dharmasvam Abhirakshatu. That is this verse. It was Dharma that brought victory to Rama after all his struggle. If a man treads the path of Dharma, he will win universal respect. If he slips into a Dharma, unrighteousness, even his brother will turn a foe. The Ramayana illustrates this truth. Sri Rama was regarded with respect even by the monkeys. What about Ravana? Even his brother Vibhishana forsakes him. Dharma and Dharma alone is our protecting shield. How did Ravana with his ten heads perish? And how did Sri Ramachandra race with his head held, held high as Vijaya Raghava, the victorious Raghava? It was all the doing of Dharma. In Tamil, we have a saying, Dharmam Talaikakum. One's religion is nothing but the Dharma practiced by one's forefathers. May all adhere to that Dharma with unwavering faith 
and courage and be rewarded with everlasting bliss conclusion of mahaparivas lecture and this guru krupa video number 5 until then dharmo rakshati rakshaha जय जय शंकर हर हर शंकर जय जय शंकर हर हर शंकर